Ever since I was a kid, I've been interested in history, especially war. The big guns, the big machines, and the big characters fascinated me. It wasn't until high school until I realized there was a bit more to war than just all the cool stuff. There's death, poverty, politics, and just truly, truly horrible things. War does not determine who is right, only who is left. One of the most well-known wars of our time is, of course, World War II. One of the biggest things I realized after studying World War II was that it changed environments, it changed economies, and it changed cities. And most importantly, it changed us. It changed people. It made humans do things that humans shouldn't do. It made humans fear other humans. Even though I knew quite a lot about World War II, the idea of kamikaze pilots really did fascinate me. Honestly, just had so many unanswered questions surrounding the kamikaze. Like, what compelled a Japanese pilot to give his own life to kill others? It truly disregarded all the understanding I have of the human condition. My first thought was about propaganda and how people could be possibly influenced or persuaded by it. But then I thought, persuaded to kill themselves? That seems like a step way too far. The kamikaze invasions originates from the Mongol invasions of 1274, where the Japanese were sure to be defeated by the sheer power of the Mongol invasion fleets. The ruling Japanese family at the time ordered for all shrines to pray for a divine intervention. And that divine intervention came in the form of a huge typhoon wave. The wave wiped out the entire Mongol invasion fleet. This moment was dubbed the divine wind, the kamikaze. This story of divine intervention was always in the minds of the kamikaze pilots. It appeared in the diaries, letters and poems that the kamikaze pilots wrote. Now after some research I found that to my surprise it wasn't the Japanese government or military at all that were influencing the kamikaze strikes. In fact, they were actually against the use of the technique. It was perhaps a lone Japanese pilot who sparked the phenomenon. In October of 1944, Rear Admiral Masafumi Amari flew his plane into a US warship. Amari knew Japan was losing the war. But he couldn't accept it. He knew there was another way he could help Japan win the war. After Amari's kamikaze flight, it sparked random copycat flights from other Japanese officers. Their goal was to persuade Japanese high command to start adapting the kamikaze technique. After seeing increasing defeat in the Pacific, Admiral Onishi, expert on naval aviation, became the pioneer of the kamikaze flight and was later known as the father of the kamikaze. Onishi saw the efforts and the results of the copycat kamikaze flights that were going on and saw it as a valid technique for winning the war. Onishi began to appeal to the Japanese youth. These were predominantly the people who were committing spontaneous kamikaze flights. Onishi began to manipulate the Japanese youth through myth and ancient military figures. These figures showed supreme devotion to the emperor through self-sacrifice and obedience. In schools, they taught of heroic warriors and of one's duty to die for the emperor. After some time, Onishi is giving the go-ahead for the first kamikaze unit, known as the Divine Wind Special Attack Corps. After hundreds volunteered, they began rigorous training. Many Japanese understood that their death would be meaningful even if it could only hold off the Americans from invading Japan for just one day. While others saw their death as meaningless, but saw their duty to Japan as paramount. These pilots used a uniform that was never used before and symbolized them as war gods. Some pilots would even burn their old uniforms the night before they flew. The success of many of these Japanese kamikaze attacks gave a renewal of energy to the Navy and High Command. To my surprise, the kamikaze attack wasn't just an air attack. Due to the Japanese's lack of homing missiles and submarines, there was a proposal made to put a human in the torpedo. After much hesitation, the Japanese had to give in to the fanatic youth and start implementing the use of suicide human torpedoes. In the attack of Japan in 1945, the US forces saw little resistance. This was a trap. It's a trap! Japan's plan was to unleash a new type of kamikaze on the invading fleet. This was a new aircraft specifically designed for kamikaze attacks. This was a small jet-powered aircraft that was packed with explosives. Japanese bomber planes would carry these aircraft and release them onto US warships. The pilots of these small aircraft were referred to as Thunder Gods. Ultimately, it still baffles me how young volunteers took to the skies and the seas to take their own life 
as the ultimate sacrifice for their country, especially when their efforts weren't enough to overcome the Allied advancement into Japan. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Um, it's something a little different. I am trying to release a bunch of different content right now about lots of different things. Hopefully you found it educational. Hopefully it will give you enough inspiration to subscribe. Thanks guys.